Right. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker. So our speaker is Paulina Sepulveda Escobar. Did I say that right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if then you are in the right spot for E. Every soul teacher educators leave training needs still a pending task that is all of paulina's presentation um paulina is a student at the university of exeter exeter i still don't know how to say that. <laughs> <laughs> who will present presentation for you i will turn it over for a little bit more of introduction more about where she's from what her background is just start here okay so Paulina okay thank you very much for that Christina uh, so I'll start sharing my screen could you please let me know if you can see it can you see the screen I guess you can because I can yes, see it as I well will. from here okay so um as you said um and Paulina okay, great, great. yes, yes. Um, I'm doing a doctoral uh, degree at the University of Exeter. It is a doctoral in TESOL. And as part of my doctoral studies, I have conducted um, a project, a DBR project. And one of the phases of the project is the one that I will be sharing with you today. And um, I hope this, com this talk is not just a kind of um, lecture sharing the research findings but also to talk and reflect about this important area um, related to teacher education but also related to language teacher education okay um, so as you can see the title of the presentation has to do with teacher educators and um, i don't want to say more about them I just want to gain insights from you. I want to know what you think a teacher educator is. And um, in order to do so, uh, let me see if this is working. Before getting into the conversation, I'd like to know how you're feeling. I know that it's early morning in Peru and Ecuador, I think is the same time zone. So I'd like you to write on the um, chat box or if you want to unmute your mic uh, to tell me how you're feeling today. I know that it's a Saturday morning um, to be here in a conference, to be in a, in a talk. So how are you feeling today? If you have a look at that scale of Omer Simpson, um, how is everyone feeling today? So seven, Sandra is feeling seven. She's quite happy, excited for the conference. Is anybody feeling eight? <laughs> It's early morning. Maybe someone is having breakfast while we're having this conversation. Seven, another seven. Another with seven. Elizabeth says seven. Wow, great. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, Christina? Good, good. Okay, okay. So, ah, uh, no, thank you for attending, Elizabeth. She says thanks for the presentation. Ah. That's very sweet. Let's <laughs> thank look at you, these pictures. What am I? feeling let's see um perhaps Eight. i'm feeling okay, number one but i'm not 100 percent sure what's happening <laughs> okay <laughs> great thanks dominic <laughs> uh, i think i'm number one paulina but i don't know what's happening with uh, with number one i think he has a blowhorn yeah but he's smiling yeah i don't i'm not sure <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. So maybe that's your feeling. Like you're not sure whether you're okay. like, yeah, excited. I'm not sure. I'm I'm excited. Both. I'm super excited. I'm I'm doing a lot of things. That maybe that's what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that's what's happening there. <laughs> if maybe someone replies okay. number six, I was just I I see Dominic says what is six? <laughs> yes. That's a great six. question. What is six? Six um could be excited, emotional. Okay. Okay. As a bride. As a bride. <laughs> <laughs> there we yes. go. Yeah. Mm. Anybody else? So we got seven. Yeah. Eugenia and Juan, seven. That's really nice that you're feeling uh, quite um, 
happy and excited to be here. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so that was just to um, make you feel more comfortable in the conversation, in the, in the reflection time that we are going to have in this session. Um, it's not only sharing the research findings, but also reflecting on them and reflecting on how they relate to our practices as teachers and as teacher educators. So as I said, um, this uh, presentation is part of my doctoral studies. Um, it is the first phase of um, a design-based project, and I'll tell you more about it later on. So before, I'd like to, first of all, um, make a difference here and explain the title. It says Easel Teacher Educators, and I uh, did it on purpose because I didn't want to classify the study into this battle and difference between EFL, ESL. Um, so I use ESL as a more comprehensive term to address ESL, ESL, sorry, EFL um, teaching. Since, um, as you may not, may know, there is this uh, battle between these two terms whether we teach EFL, whether we teach ESL, um, some people say that there is no difference between them. And I'm one of those. So that's why I'm using easel instead of using just one of them. Um, that was just to clarify. And I'm going to move on to this question because I want to know more of you, more about what you know about this area. And um, if you want, you can unmute your mic. There is a blue bottom in the top right um, corner, I think it is, where you can ask, yeah, where you can ask to join the conversation if you want to talk. If not, that's all right. Uh, you can type your answers as you were doing with the previous activity. So for you, how would you define the role of an ESO teacher, educator or trainer? And who is this person? Who is an ESO teacher educator according to your opinion? So I'm here to listen. I'm here to read. If you want to talk, unmute your mic. If not, type down your, um, write down your answer in the chat box, please. So who is that teacher educator? Who is a language teacher educator? And how would you define their role? Who are they? Who, who is an, an ESO teacher educator in your country? I know that many, many people are from different countries. Um, yeah, thank you, um, Denise, for that. Yeah, to unmute your mic, click on the blue ask to share audio and video, and, and then you can start talking if you want. If not, type down your answer in the chat box. So this is an interesting question. I mean, are we talking about the demographic of who an ESL, an ESL teacher could be? For example, I would say, are, are most ESL teachers young or are, are there teachers from all different backgrounds? I feel like there are many ways we could answer this question. That's the interesting side of the question. So mm. what, what mm -hmm. comes to your mind when I say mm. ESL teacher educator? So it comes to your mind just the different backgrounds, um, the different mm -hmm. school experiences. I don't know what comes to your mind with the term. So it's interesting. I think from my perspective as um, an American, as someone who li lived and grew up in the United States, I th think I have an image of someone who travels a lot because the e the ESOL teachers that I have met um, have often been just big travelers. They wanted to teach English because they wanted to learn about other cultures and teaching English, sharing their own language was a way to do that. So that's my background. Um, mm -hmm. I see, and I did that myself. I, I traveled to Peru and I um, taught English as a second language over there as a way of experiencing Peruvian culture and mm -hmm. um, broadening my horizons, but also helping others you know learn my language so mm. I see Juan oh and Elizabeth also made comment ESOL teachers who help learners of English to mm -hmm. succeed communicating orally 
and in writing, ready for academic success and job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Great, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, trainers, our mentors, peers, great. Yeah. So Juan comments, ESOL teachers are those in charge of teaching English to people who don't speak English as their first language, which I think that's a, that's a very common, like that's I think the most basic definition that you could definition. arrive to. I think that's mm -hmm. right one. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We got another one that says um, ESOL teacher is a guy to ask that question. Um, what do you think? Do you think that an ESL teacher is a guide? Uh, Patrick is also commenting hmm. that um, support the student teacher to engage in continuous process of improving their craft. Uh, hmm. I do think a teacher educator must be consciously trying to play this role. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree, Juan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he writes, can you see yeah, yeah, his comment there? Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, teaching goes beyond the language itself. Yeah, which I, I totally agree. I think it, it reaches into, um, like someone, some others have commented, it, it reaches into um, employment opportunities as a mentorship. It reaches into um, preparing them in many other areas of life, I think. Mm -hmm yeah 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 um so thank you very much for everyone thank you christina for sharing your um insights into the topic so of course when i um decided to name the presentation with this uh, with this term i knew that some differences will arise so that's why i presented it at the beginning so we know from the very beginning um who are we talking about and who I am addressing when I say ESO teacher educator. Um, let me see. If, um, of course, I will jump into I will jump into here before getting and then I, I will go back because um, there seems to be a difference between what I am going to talk about teacher educators and what you the audience um, understand with the term. So when I talk about teacher educators, and I think that I agree with one or two comments, um, I'm referring to the teachers who prepare, who educate future ESO teacher educators. So as you know, in Latin America or in Chile, where I conducted this study, um, most uh, future teachers enrolled in pedagogía en inglés or licenciatura en inglés, which is the program where they study to become teachers. And in that, in that program, in that course, in that degree, there are academics who prepare them, who, who educate uh, future teachers to become teachers of English. So I'm referring to those professionals, to the ones that work at the university, the ones that work at school and um, help future teachers to continue learning, help future teachers to um, learn how to teach. So that is the, the, the main definition of teacher educators. Um, and here I'm not talking about ESOL teachers, which is the, the case that Christina was sharing when she moves to Peru to teach English. Uh, she doesn't teach English to future teachers of English. She teaches English to other, other people, people that want to learn the language, but not people that want to teach the language. So that's the main difference between an ESOL teacher and an ESOL teacher educator. So it's a teacher of teachers. Okay, so that would be like the main difference. And um, so I'll move back to here. So now understanding the difference between teachers, ESOL teachers and ESOL teacher educators, I'd like you to think because most of the people who are here, I guess are teachers of English. So they undertook a program, an undergraduate program in teaching English. Um, so maybe you, you studied uh, licenciatura, you studied a bachelor, you studied, um, I don't know, pedagogia, or you studied celta, kelta. So 
what do you remember most about teacher educators? What do you remember most about that, uh, those people who help you become a teacher? So that's the question that I'll leave there. Please feel free to mute your mic or type your, your answers so we can read it and then um, comment on it. So what do you remember most about teacher educators? Hmm. So we are going to wait uh, for people to reply. It could be something positive or negative that you remember. And Christina, uh, the yeah, Christina left. Any memories that come to your mind when I'm talking about that time when you study to become a teacher? Please feel free to share your ideas if you want and mute your mic or use the chat so you can write down your um, answers. Okay, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Yes, that's what usually uh, how that we could describe a teacher education program, uh, where there is a plan with teaching foundations and pedagogical aspects. And it has to do, of course, with reflective practice. Yes, thank you very much. That's absolutely true. Elizabeth, do you remember the time when you studied? To become a teacher do you remember your teachers the teacher educators the people who work at the university um, educating teachers either pre-service or in-service teachers yes what do you remember the most about them okay sandra there we have uh, many teacher educators taught me, very few helped me and inspired me to blossom as a teacher. I think a teacher educator should, in, should inspire it. That's true. Thank you very much, Sandra, for that thought-provoking comment. Yes, a teacher educator should inspire it. And there um, we got like, is there a difference between a teacher educator and a teacher in terms of the work they do, in terms of the motivation they show to their students? Okay, there were models of, for teaching practice. Okay, there we got like a, a different opinion from the one that Sandra was sharing. Patek says that he loved um, his teacher educators, but I remember being so disappointed that nobody would show me techniques. We talked about theory, but then they just said, go and teach now. Absolutely in agreement with you. I can feel you. Yeah, I experienced almost the same. As a result, 20 years later, I started my own practical teacher training program, root in serving, um, yeah, Christina, you're back, immigrant communities mutual support and coach practice teaching. That's really interesting, Patrick. Yes, so there we got another experience again. So good and bad experience and good and bad memories from teacher educators. They were models for teaching. They usually inspired. Um, Elizabeth stated that. On the contrary, um, Sandra believes that um, teacher educators, her teacher educators didn't in inspire her. That's good. Juan, their way of teaching, there is a way to start learning how to teach, having a model to follow. That has happened to me during my bachelor degree and during all teaching qualifications and training sessions I have attended. Okay, so I guess that you got then nice memories from your teacher educators, Juan. I think that they have inspired you to continue learning and they have inspired you and they have been a model, a teaching model to follow. Yes, exactly. 
um, so then again, um, if we think about teacher educators as a model, if we think about a teacher educator as a teacher that inspires future teachers, then their role is even more important. And that is the rationale and that is the research problem that I address. Um, I addressed the issue of lack of attention to these professionals. Um, and I'm going to talk particularly about the experience in Chile, where I conducted this study, but also how the international, international experience and how the international research field has um, started to grow and pay attention to, um, to these uh, professionals. Eugenia, thank you very much for your comment. They were happy and that inspired you to study even more. Maybe they inspire you to become the good teacher that you are now. So that's why it is really important to pay attention to these professionals, to know who they are, what they do, what they do to keep learning, how do they update and keep updated with their knowledge. So um, the um, experience and the um, research in the last few years, I would say two or three years, um, have started to pay attention, to pay even more attention to these professionals as it is believed that education could be enhanced by promoting the education of future te of teacher educators. Why? Because there's, there's been a lot of attention given to teacher education curriculum, to pre-service teachers, to what novice teachers do, but nobody knows what happened at the university. Nobody knows who prepares, who educates a future teacher. Nobody knows if that teacher educator is actually capable of teaching, of teaching how to teach. So that's the main rationale of the study and um, of the um, call for attention that I'm trying to, to make in, in Latin America mainly, because most of the studies, as you can see there in the slide, come from Europe. Um, this International Forum for Teacher Educator Development started in 2016, 17, I guess, I think. And um, there has been a growing evidence that if we pay attention to teacher educators, the education of future teachers and the education in general will be enhanced. Uh, and that's why we need to pay attention to these professionals and consider them as professionals. What do we mean by professionals? So there we got another area that uh, supports this call for attention. And as I said, this study was conducted in Chile. Um, I conducted a document analysis. I paid attention to all the, the policies related to teacher education. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing about these professionals. There is no support for them either to continue learning, uh, which makes the situation even worse. And why I'm focusing on teachers, um, on ESO teacher educators, it is because they teach like ESO so teacher educators, if you remember your teachers, um, they had, uh, they were multitasking most of the time. They were teaching you the language, teaching us the language. They were teaching us how to teach the language, how to teach English at schools. Um, and also they were teaching all of that, all of those aspects through the language. So three tasks at the same time so their role is is quite relevant then um, and it's important to make the difference here between teacher educators and ESO teacher educators because we I mean teacher educators do these three tasks teach about the language teach uh, uh, how to teach the language and also use the language as a means of instruction okay um, 
So that's why the attention to, to teacher educators, to ESO teacher educators, need to be um, considered and need to be given in policy um, uh, from policymakers, from institutions, from teacher education research as well. So I told you about the experience in Chile a little bit. I told you about how this has increased the attention uh, in Europe. But I would like to know if it is similar in your country, because I know that people, I pick up, picked up the countries that you can see in the slides from the previous um, workshop. I'm sure there are people from other countries that are, that are not there. I'm sorry for that. It's just that um, the people that were in the previous workshop were from these countries. Um, so is it similar in your country? Do you think that there is enough attention to teacher educators, to ESO teacher educators, or is it enough attention to them? What, what's your insight? Again, feel free to unmute your mic or um, share your comments in the chat window. Okay, so I see Eric says pretty similar in Peru. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So now I'm then, then. The same in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we got more answers. So maybe we can rephrase the question again in case we have some new yes. people joining okay. us. Okay. Yes, because as I was uh, sharing with you the experience from Chile and the growing attention that has emerged in Europe to teacher educators, um, I ask you um, if it is similar in your country, the lack of attention to teacher educators. In Chile, there is no attention to them. There is nothing related to who they are, what they do, how they continue learning, what's their background, how they came into teacher education, um, and how, mm -hmm. yeah, how they came into teacher education. Were they mm -hmm. hired because they had enough school experience? Were they hired because they are native English pe people? Were they hired because they have a PhD in education? So there is no information. Mm. There is no mm -hmm. attention in Chile. In Europe, it's starting to grow. And we don't know what's happening in Latin America as well. So that's why I'm, I'm asking. Mm. And we can see that in Peru, Ecuador is um, the mm. same. The same as Chile. Yeah. I say, mm. um, Dominic commented, when I started teaching in graduate school in the US, I received almost no training. I was just thrown into the classroom and expected to figure it out. Which, I mean, that's that's interesting. We're, we're noticing that, okay, Chile, Ecuador, Peru, they have this experience. And then also in the US, in some contexts, we have this experience of just being thrown in and expected mm. to handle all of the challenges. Um, I can comment on my own experience, even in the U.S. and in Peru, that um, I received very little training as well when it came to on the ground, what do you do when you have difficult students in, in the classroom? Like right now, this context, mm -hmm. when a, a student of mine was throwing a fit and screaming and, and whatever because of, you know, some difficult situations at home, and I was just there, you know, expected to continue teaching him English. Mm -hmm. um, he was very young. He was probably five years old. So I know that's not everyone's context, but still there's, there was no training for me on, on those issues. Um, so yeah. yeah, interesting. I see more comments here. Thank you so much for writing in the chat. It's um, Edison said almost no practicum before facing a classroom. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And yeah. then Elizabeth says, some other things here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, she said, good training is limited sometimes to a few private institutions. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is one comment here that somebody, uh, 
Yeah, it's more I think that if you're not good enough at something you like, but you know some English, become an English teacher. So really, yeah, uh, interesting, interesting comment. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm. Dominic yeah. also commented here on the bottom. Also, though, sometimes training is offered, but if it's not made mandatory, I find that a lot of teachers don't make the time to do it. So that's also an interesting yeah, comment, and an interesting perspective on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting as well, because then we can talk about that, how that training, how that professional development responds to teachers' needs. If it doesn't, of course, teachers are going mm. to resist. Teachers are not going to attend if it is not related mm. to their context. Mm -hmm. um, lots of theory, mm. not training on developing materials or preparing student-centered classes, which is absolutely true. Mm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Teaching qualifications are expensive and we don't have support to take them. I'm looking forward to starting my Delta, but it's very expensive. That's another thing, lack of support. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, yes, thank you very much for your comment. Mm -hmm. um, so we can see like a similar situation in different countries. Um, and it is important to, to consider this lack of attention, this lack of relationship between their needs and the offer and the professional learning initiatives that we as teachers are offered. So um, that's why I wanted to like um, get your attention to this area because um, because the um, idea of conducting this study is that if we know, if we um, identify who these professionals are, what their background is and what their needs are, more opportunities for professional development that are tailored to their needs could be developed. And in this way, we will contribute to knowledge locally. So I use the word locally. So contributing to knowledge about ESOL teacher educators globally and also regional knowledge about teacher educators, regional, I mean, in Latin America. And of course, when I uh, shared with you, I was briefed in the definition of teacher educators, but there you got literature saying that it is someone who contributes in a formal way to the learning and development of teachers, including those who work in higher education and those who work at school. Sometimes we forget about uh, teachers working at school who are cooperating with um, pre-service teacher education. So most of the um, most of the teacher educators learn how to educate pre-service teachers on the job. There is no induction as, um, I don't remember Dominic, I think was the one commenting. There was no induction, no mentoring, You're just thrown into the classroom and do as much as you can with your own resources. There is no mentoring and no induction. And of course the entry to academia, the entry to um, the entry to teacher education programs for teacher trainers or for teacher, for teacher educators. When I talk about teacher educator, I refer to teacher trainers as, as, as one, like I use them as um, the, same, the same professional. Uh, I make the difference between educator and trainer. It's just because I believe this is a personal assumption that a teacher educator is more than a trainer, is an educator, is, is a person that educates a future teacher, not just trains, not just giving, not just sharing knowledge and skills, but also educates beyond the, um, the uh, specificities and beyond the technical characteristics of teaching. Um, so of course this study um, took into account the, exper the international experience, um, I'm sharing this briefly with you. Um, there is this institute in um, Israel that is called Mofet, where uh, teacher educators attend the um, attend 
the Institute to continue learning alongside the changes in education. So, for example, if a new reform, if a new school policy is implemented, of course, teachers, the school teachers will have to adapt to that policy, but also the people who educate, who's educating future teachers will have to adapt, will have to get to know this new policy. Uh, and that's why this institute was created. It is a fantastic opportunity. It is an amazing, and brilliant idea um, as it provides support for teacher educators. The same with Infotev, the one from Europe and the one from the Netherlands, the Bellon Association. If you want, you can Google them and uh, have a look at those um, spaces and see how amazing they are. So, um, of course, I'm going to skip that because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to share a little bit about the study. The study comes from a design-based research project. It's part of my doctoral study. It is the first exploratory phase. Um, I conducted two iterative cycles afterwards, but this phase, the one that I'm sharing with you today, um, emerged as the uh, basis for the following stages. I used a questionnaire and a focus group to conduct this study um, and the aim was to identify teacher educators professional learning initiatives so what teacher educators do to continue learning and also what they need what they think they need to continue learning so um, the questionnaire participants I uh, this um, study was um, conducted in Chile, as I said, 53 teacher educators answered the survey. Uh, well, there were more people who answered the survey, but I just considered the uh, complete answers. Uh, most of them were, I mean, were between 36 and 50 years old. Uh, the pathway to academia, the, the pathway to teacher education was uh, mainly an invitation to join the teacher education program. So either the program director, either um, the academic coordinator invited teachers to join teacher education programs and the participants mostly identified as teachers of teachers, teachers, and a few of them identified as researchers. Uh, the focus group participants were different uh, teacher educators uh, who worked in one particular institution. They work in an English language teaching program in Chile and they got enough school experience, most of them, and uh, also they got sufficient um, teacher education experience in higher education. Um, I'm sorry, and then there are um, some characteristics that you can have a look at there. Uh, the amount of work that they do um, in the teacher education program. And also um, from the questionnaire, uh, there you go that most of them identified as teacher of teachers. Um, and then teacher, there is also a, a great um, I'm trying to keep up with the comments and the presentations at the same time. Uh, there is um, a large group of uh, teacher educators that identified uh, with the word teacher, which is really interesting, and then researcher and then um, academic administrator. So the findings, um, the um, majority of teacher educators, so these academics that work at the university um, have engaged in the last year uh, mostly in formal initiatives such as workshops, ELT conferences. Uh, a few of them have conducted research and as uh, somebody else uh, was mentioning, um, engaging in postgraduate studies, that's to say a master's degree or a PhD, so mainly formal initiatives. That's what they do, what they currently do. Their preference, however, is different. So what they want to do is to work with colleagues, is to read scientific journals, is to, do, is to conduct self-study, is to have informal conversations with colleagues. 
So that there we got like a discrepancy between what they do, what they want to do, and then we also see a difference with what they need, what they say, this is what we need, this is what we lack. We need to learn how to conduct research. We are, we are being pushed by the university to have to respond to administrative requirements, to the performativity indicators. Um, we need to know how to conduct research as part of this role as academics. But at the same time, we need to consider that most of them come to the teacher education program by being school teachers. So there is no induction, no preparation to become academics and to know how to conduct research. So that's why their needs, their what their first needs relate to this um, uh, requirement to learn how to conduct the research. There is also a need to learn about classroom diversity and ICT. Um, and this area was uh, supported in the focus group as well, as they stated that they when they studied to become teachers, this classroom diversity was not part of their curriculum. So they have to, they have now to keep updated about the changes in, in the education, about the changes in policy, in order to, to be updated. And finally, as, as the preferences showed, they want to learn in collaboration with colleagues and not only in individual um, learning opportunities. Okay, so there we see that there is a kind, there is a difference between what they do and they do it because, of course, they try to respond to the performativity agenda of higher education. Um, and then we see a different um, orientation towards what they want to do. And then, of course, something else relates to what they need, what they feel, what they believe they need to keep uh, learning. So this brings um, us to ask you as teachers or teacher educators, if you work in teacher education programs, if I ask you to fill in this green chart and write down the, pre the professional development and learning activities that you do and the professional development activities that you like doing and the professional development activities that you think that you need, would you find a, a difference between these three sections or do you think that they will be related? So can I ask you for two or three minutes to think about these um, areas? If you want to share it orally, you're more than welcome. If not, you can write down in the chat box PDL activities, for example, you do you attend a lot of workshops, but then in your preference, you want to learn with colleagues and then you think that you need to learn more about research, for example. So there we can see that there is no relationship. There might be other ca cases where there is relationship. PDL activities that you do, conferences, preferences, conferences, maybe you like conferences, and what you need is to attend more conferences mainly. So um, over to you, think about these three areas, fill in the, um, the chart orally or mentally, and then share your insights into the uh, chat box. In, and I'll be here reading, catching up with the comments, okay? So just one, two minutes to, to think about this, to write down your answers and um, I'll be here. So just one or two minutes. So if I could just comment quickly, I'm so sorry, by the way, for my times, but thank you for your patience there. Um, I think I 
No, we cannot hear you. Comment. Christina. I can go to almost directly um, oh, with any that I, that I need. If I have a question about a very specific situation with a student, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So I, I do have a mentor, which is a wonderful resource. Um, maybe something that I would like to do. Uh, um, I think I would I would like to be able to uh, we cannot hear you well. Maybe no, we don't hear you quite well. Maybe type down your answer. I think I, I'm a very no, we cannot hear you, Christina. I will uh, move on to the comments and um, um, Patrick. Um, Thank you for your comment, Patrick. Yes, you can contact me. I will um, provide my details and when we can discuss more in detail about this uh, research project. Um, Juan, in my department, I have a strategy through which all teachers have to define a line of development and they have to share with the rest of the staff their findings on the chosen topic during our meetings. That's amazing, Juan. That's a really good opportunity for teachers to learn with and from colleagues and sometimes um, people believe as somebody else said up up in some common app um, that people believe that professional development and learning is only formal opportunities but there we go with um with um edison commented on um on that area with one sorry and then yes christina now you're back I was reading the comments. Ah, uh, no, good. I'm glad. I know. I love the comments. They're they're awesome. Um, again, I'm so sorry. It's just something that's happening. I think in the city in general. Um, so I apologize. Um, but one thing that I find very helpful, I think, it, my last comment was this: um, is actually observing teachers in their more experienced teachers specifically in their classrooms and just watching them work and then um, kind of being involved in their classroom almost as a student would be involved. I think that is a really great learning opportunity for me. Um, I love that um, with Change, where I currently teach, um, we have those opportunities um, and it's been really helpful for me, actually. That's great. That's yeah. an, an amazing place then to work if you are provided with these opportunities to keep up learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. it's, it's really nice. There's always a dialogue mm. between mm. all of our teachers in the group, which I think now that I'm talking to more teachers and I'm hearing their their experiences, I think it is unique. And I mm -hmm. wish it wasn't unique. Yeah, you know, I wish yeah. it was the case and the experience of all teachers and teacher educators that there was this continuous dialogue between what was happening, what they wanted to happen. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Um, Eric commented that he, what he does is to attend courses and the preferences, what he'd like to do is to apply what he learns from the courses. And he feels that one of his professional learning needs is, uh, appropriate feedback from head of the center. So you, what you mean is that you need more feedback from the uh, institution. Mm. Is that is that what you refer to, Eric? I think it has to mm, do with yes. that. So, yeah, it's, yeah, really, it's sure. really important. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I agree. That's a huge piece. Feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Edison says that he attends conferences and webinar, but many times they are 
theoretical only. He'd like mm. to learn more about practical activities and he thinks that one of his um, needs, professional learning needs, is uh, training on digital to digital tools and feedback. Mm -hmm. So again, this, this is quite relevant. So it calls again our attention to listening to teachers, listening to their professional learning needs, and then co-designing, designing with them, for them, by them, professional learning opportunities that are um, related to what they want, related to how they want to learn, and related to what they need. So some, we get back to the point from the beginning that sometimes uh, teachers resist attending professional development because it's not relevant for them. It's not relevant to their context. It's not relevant to their needs. So it's like a circle um, problem phenomenon. So we cannot, Juan, I completely agree with your comment. We cannot stop our professional development and learning so if there is no opportunities we need to create them and that's i absolutely agree with you we don't need to wait for somebody else to do the task for us um so yes i will uh, finish now because i'm running out of time and um so there so the implications of the study and the implications of the conversation and of the topic is that, um, of course, what the participants prefer and claim to need to continue learning goes against the transmissive. The transmissive are those models where you just go sit down and listen to an expert um, and requires a more transformative oriented approach towards uh, professional learning. And in order to do so, the institution should provide support. Policies as well should provide more attention and support uh, to teachers and teacher educators to continue learning. Otherwise, we will have this prescribed and demanded professionalism. So doing what the institution only tells us to do. Um, so teacher educators and their professional learnings, learning needs um, is a complex, multidimensional and multifactorial um, phenomenon. And um, finally, to conclude, of course, as I said before, it is important to um, conduct this um, needs analysis to know what teachers, to identify teachers' needs, what they want to do, what how they want to learn. And uh, in this way, we will be promoting um, knowledge for practice and not only um, knowledge of practice, which is uh, a, a little different uh, there. And as I said at the beginning, ESO teacher educators are a particular group of professionals uh, that educate teachers how to teach. They teach about the language and they teach using the language. So more attention needs to be given um, to them. So that's it. I don't know if there is any question. The um, Q and A session now. If um, there is any comment, question. Mm, so we see some comments. Thank you all for your sweet comments. There, um, great topic. Thank you. Great topic, Paulina. Um, so yes, I, we are unfortunately running out of time. So um, we only have about three more three more minutes until we have to go into our networking time. Um, but I love how much dialogue we've been able to have. Um, so thank you so much, Paulina, for giving us that very reflective kind of approach to this topic. I feel like we were able to kind of arrive to some of these conclusions ourselves, um, mm -hmm. the points that you were making, um, which is really useful. Um, so yeah. if I can just make a comment, since I know we only have now two minutes, <laughs> yeah. um, that I, I love how um, we've kind of arrived at the conclusion that we need to take some of these matters into our own hands, in a sense. We need to approach this, you know, professional development a bit more hands-on, you know. We need to kind of go to our institutions or form those teachers groups or, you know, find those mentors ourselves because, um, what we're seeing is that what we want to have happen and what is actually happening is 
is is not in line. So that's actually a really, really great point, I think, for us to take yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I completely so. agree with you. Yeah, and with all the comments, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and if you want to contact me, you can um, email me. My details are there in the slides um, if you want to.